Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at using interceptors in a custom Alexa skill. And we're going to do that using Alexa hosted skills. And so head over to developer.amazon.com and log in. If you don't have an account, you can create one, and then you want to head to the uh, Alexa developer console, and that's where we are right now. And then create a skill, and I'm going to just call this demo skill. And this is an Alexa hosted skill for Node.js that we're going to be working with. And then create and choose the Hello World uh, template, which is the, the default. And this will take about a minute to set up. So while this is setting up, I will point you also over to, if you go to dabblelab.com slash templates, you'll find uh, the source code for what I'm going to create here as one of the uh, the templates and uh, there's a lot of other uh, templates there that you can use for free for learning how to build Alexa skills or creating uh, a, a skill faster. All right, so interceptors are basically, um, they are code that can be set up to run before a um, your intent code is run or after your intent code complete. So when a, uh, a request comes into Alexa, the code that you write to handle that request gets, um, gets executed. And with interceptors, you can also set up code that's going to run before uh, or again after. And reasons you might want to do this um, would include, for example, if you are creating a skill that uses account linking and you want to make sure that before any of the intent handler code is run that you're Con, uh, confirming that your user is authenticated, something like that, or, or checking that they've enabled um, um, uh, permissions or those kinds of things. And so I'm going to use a, I'm, I'm not going to focus on the specific use case. Uh, we're just going to look at how you would set it up. And I'll use a really simple use case so I don't confuse the, the point with, um, uh, yeah, something that, that's outside the scope of what we're going to do here. Okay, so our hosted skill is up and running and the example um, let me let me first just talk through how you would wire it up so like I mentioned it's going to be code that runs um, right now we've got the uh, the default hello world skill here well, why don't we do a couple of things like so why don't we just we'll just log first um, that uh, We'll say our code is done. Okay, so basically this is going to get logged just before we return a result from our launch request handler here, and so we'll we'll save that, and we're gonna I'm gonna open a new tab to test, <clears throat> and actually. So this doesn't keep prompting me. I'm gonna reprompt. I'm gonna just comment this out and just change this to hello there. And <clears throat> deploy that. So now we got a really simple uh, skill here that when we launch it, it's just gonna say hello there. And we're gonna look at where the, uh, the code gets, and I called this skill demo skill. Hello there. And so now if we look at the CloudWatch log for this skill, you can I'll open a new tab to do that. We'll see that one item get logged. See right here our intent handler code is done. So we're going to start with there's two types of interceptors. There is a request and a response interceptor. We're going to start with a request interceptor. And the way that you set them up is um, pretty much the same for, for both. So we are going to create a function and I'll call this my request. And um, we're just going to have uh, one method in there and that is going to take in handler input like this and this is where this code will run before our intent code 
Okay. And we're just going to do the same thing here. We'll say um, our interceptor, request interceptor, code is done. Once you've created the interceptor code, which is just this, and of course, in a real skill, you'd be doing a lot more than just logging, but so all of our code would run up here that we wanted to, to run before our intent code, and then uh, we would finish up down here. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to register that. So you would register it with add request inter c e p t o r and then this is plural interceptors and then you would just enter your function name in there and we should be all set at this point so we'll save it and deploy it and then once it's deployed we'll go test it and take a look at our cloudwatch logs again so let's try that again hello there Okay, so back over here, take a look. And not yet, try it again. Okay, here we go. Um, so now you can see we've got our request interceptor code is done and that finished or that got logged before our intent handler code. So you can see our request interceptor ran prior to our intent handler code. And if we wanna do something that um, illustrates that, maybe what could we do? Um, why don't we do this? We will, let's see, we'll do something like, uh, um, just save something to save something to the request attributes and request attributes are um, basically uh, parameters that you can pass in it's actually an object but you can have parameters in there we'll just call this one message from our quest interceptor. And just to illustrate that this is being run before, and this is um, also incidentally how you might pass information back and forth from the request interceptor to a, uh, uh, an intent handler. So we'll save that, and then I'm gonna go back up to my code here, my uh, speech output, and I'm going to modify this to um, basically use that. Uh, uh, make this async. I don't think I need to do this, probably, but do it anyway. And then um, manager and we'll get request and then down here we'll modify this to use that so That's what we called it. So, so if um, if this works the way that it's supposed to, what's happening is we get uh, down here. We're setting a uh, an attribute called message, and we're setting this value. And then up here in our launch request handler, I'm using that to uh, 
to as this speech output, speak output to send back to the user. And this just kind of reinforces or illustrates again that point that this code down here in the interceptor is running before this code runs up here. So did I deploy that? <clears throat> Go back over here and do it again. A message from our request interceptor. So you can see now that we're getting our message from the interceptor, and I think that probably covers that point. The next thing that we're going to take a look at are response interceptors. And a response interceptor is pretty much. I mean, you set it up the same way. It's pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to just copy and paste, just change the name to response, response interceptor like that. And um, this, I don't need this. But what I will do is say our response interceptor code is done. And then we need to register our response interceptors as well. So add and this response interceptor here. Add response interceptors, that looks good. And we'll deploy it. And we'll test it one more time. A message from our request interceptor. And what should be different now is if we go back to our CloudWatch logs and we look at this, sometimes it takes a second for the log to get in there, but there we go. Okay, so now this time you can see our request interceptor code ran and then our intent handler code ran and then last our response interceptor code ran. So the response interceptor, again, would be code that you would want to run after your, um, your intent handler code runs. So this might be logging or per persisting attributes to a database, something like that. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, simple example, again, you can go to dabblelab.com slash templates if you want to get the source code. Also, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those and I will respond just as quickly as possible. And if you're watching this video on YouTube and you found it helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the Dabble Lab YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Dabble Lab, where there are now more than 200 other uh, tutorial videos on building Alexa skills and related topics. Thanks so much.